D Hell Love said, I wish you wouldn't do that kind of noise when you talk. It feels like you're mumbling for an ASMR video. Speak up, my boy. I wish you wouldn't do that kind of noise when you talk. It feels like you're mumbling for it. Hey, I literally can't do it. I wish you wouldn't do that kind of noise when you talk. It feels like you're mumbling for an ASMR video. Speak up, my boy. Yeah, I literally can't do it. Do you understand how much energy I exert when I'm recording? This is, this is, I'm at 100% right now. I cannot sustain this for more than 20 minutes at a time. Kiwi said, we've been trying to wake you, Alex. It's been 15 years. Technology has improved, and we found a way to access your dreamlike coma. Please wake up. This comment actually made me uncomfortable. Deco City said on a enclosure review video, Alex, if you go to the place where we saw the window, are you going by the town to get some milk? There is a child there, but are you from when we saw something there is the wedding? This, this actually fried my brain. When I, when I get off of YouTube and go outside and talk to real human beings, this is how I hear all of them. This is how I comprehend human speech. My guess is you did the autocomplete thing where you like just keep tapping the recommended word and then it makes a sentence. But I, I spent like five minutes trying to figure out what he was trying to say. Maple Bagel said, why is no one talking about how he's only wearing one sock? Maple Bagel, I don't want to call you out in particular, but there are 88 comments on this video specifically addressing nothing but my sock. That is over 25% of the comments on this video. That is one in every four comments was about my sock. Everybody was talking about my sock, okay? I don't know what you're talking about. MD on the video, the video doesn't even matter because she said, do you actually like Jordan Peterson? LMAO. Sometimes I make this grave mistake of showing, of, of just happening to show a book, which I have happened to read or listen to. I think I was promoting a, a book service in this video. How do you people form opinions without getting perspectives? Oh wait, you, you probably just don't get perspective. You just pick an opinion and you stick with it to your grave and anything that is possibly thrown at your opinion, it doesn't matter how logical it is, you just ignore it because your opinion is your opinion and your opinion is right. I have donate, I've, I've donated physical money. I've been a Patreon and donor of Paul Joseph Watson and Contra Points. I watch so much content. I have listened to many different types of books. I, I am molding on video, everyone. What I'm trying to say is I get so many comments complaining about, why do you follow them on Twitter? Why did you read that book? Why is that video in your liked videos? Because I listen to multiple opinions, that's it. I'm not even a centrist. I am far from a centrist and yet I somehow managed to absorb multiple opinions while not losing my mind like this comment is that's it all right we're moving on to something more fun like a fun fact from straight zebra if every egg from one pair of totes survived to adulthood and each toad lived for five years and all the eggs from their descendants survived the entire surface of the earth would be covered in toads in 15 years we can all dream of the world that we wish to live in on an unboxing video, Kelsey said, if you want to take a break from reptiles, but still make this kind of um, video, you could get pack packages sent from fans, bad unboxing style. I reckon people would still watch them if you kept this editing. So actually the unboxing videos are bad unboxing inspired. And I actually tried to do this. I opened my PO box at one point and shared it and people sent a lot of cool stuff, but it just honestly wasn't an interesting video. So yeah, I actually tried to do a kind of bad on like a reptile unboxing but it's just stuff that you sent to the p.o box but it was all just like wholesome fan art and cute creations which were cool but it just wasn't an interesting video so i tried it maybe i'll try it again i still have a p.o box but i don't really sh i don't know i'll think about it if you want to see that though you can let me know on the video can you breeze freeze mice and rats for snakes after thawing which i assume in the video i said that you should not feed live rodents to snakes unless you have to william stewart said wait you disagree with thousands and thousands of years of evaluation no no william stewart i disagree with millions and millions of years of evaluation on the video, I regret buying a crested gecko from a crack house. Miss Voodoo Mama said the smell you're referring to is meth smoke. 
Uh, Chico said the plastic smell could have been smoking heroin. Aurora said that I was indeed smelling meth. Sleepy Sundu said I was probably smelling DMT. Lotus X said I was probably smelling crack cocaine. And Nicholas Finn said the smell I described was speed. I have absolutely no idea what I was smelling, but according to the comments, I, I truly, I don't know. Like I kept getting, I was like, oh, well, I guess it was this and I guess it was this, but I think every single drug on earth had been listed of what I was actually smelling. So what was I smelling in this house for the Cresta Gecko? I don't know, but I guess we can confirm it was a drug. Maybe it was just all of them. <laughs> Jordan Hub said bro was in the trenches for a Cresta Gecko. <laughs> I think it's a great uh, example of how laser focused I become on things. I actually, I'm, I was gonna, I've, I've recorded it before, but I wanna re record it a video on like how I stay motivated. And a TLDR version of what that video will be is I apply, I, I, I have a goal in every single decision that I make for the remainder of my life until I reach that goal is based purely on whether it gets me closer or further to that goal. And unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know which one, all thoughts of safety and logic and good ideas go out the door and I am just laser focused on whatever I gotta do, which as Jordan said, was apparently being in the trenches for a Cresta Gecko. So part of the video was in me being regretful for not reporting the house. Razor said bros just hating on how people live. Other people, like Elizabeth said, if that ever happens again, I should call 911 right away. Casanova said I did the right thing because it's none of my business. What people have going on in their homes is better to just mind your own business. So that it was like 50, I don't know, I think it was probably about 50, 50, maybe not. You can look through the comments of people saying, I absolutely did the right thing and I absolutely did the wrong thing, so. I, it's just a, it was an interesting like poll of how people view that kind of thing so honestly it's all over the place and I feel less bad now I guess because clearly there was no clear right answer so eh, it actually made me feel a little bit better all right arena 14 said if you're doing those alone regularly you have a death wish take care of yourself more well, I don't really do pickups nowadays. Uh, I occasionally buy stuff on Craigslist, but it's usually just in a public place. But yeah, it was it was a very gradual thing. So it started where it was always me and at least one other person. And we would go and we'd tell people our location. We drive to a public meeting space and it's, it's, it's in broad daylight. There's other people around, but then gradually it was like, oh, well this pickup, it, uh, they can't leave their house, but it's okay, we'll go together, we'll be safe. And then it was like, oh, well this pickup, we really want it, but one of us can't be available. So you know what, I'll, I'll just go, but it's in a public place. And it's like, well, it's at their house, you can't go. I'll, I'll just go by myself to their house. It's okay, it's just this once. And then eventually, it, we were just going absolutely anywhere at any time, any time of the day, any location, any number of people to all pick up. So yeah, that, it's just, it's kind of funny how it went from like hyper safety to absolutely no regard for safety. But I'm still here, everyone, whether you like it or not. On the video, It's Time, where I drink a Dr. Pepper for seven minutes, Quinn Adams said, Happy Father's Day, Daddy Alex. And it actually like slightly made me legitimately uncomfortable how many people wished me a happy Father's Day. Please don't do that again, <laughs> okay. Delight said, I can't believe I spent six minutes and 11 seconds watching a man sniff, drink, and be disappointed by soda, all while risking his life for it. <laughs> Out of context, I feel like my content is gradually making absolutely no sense. Like, it's gonna be hard to attract new people when some of this stuff is makes absolutely no logical sense, because this video is technically a part four of a story time, like like a, a real time story time series, but none of the parts are marked and you have no idea which videos is a new part. <laughs> Limited Bones said, I specifically purchased Darkberry Dr. Pepper because of your last video. They should sponsor you in your heart. And I got multiple replies from people saying that they also went and purchased Darkberry Dr. Pepper. In the 0% chance that Dr. Pepper has seen that video, they would have put me on a blacklist of people not to sponsor. I literally dedicated time segments and videos to how their product might kill me. 
<laughs> I don't think they're gonna give me money for that. Strange Pets said, I started working at a bottling factory. I make the syrups for a lot of different brands of bottled and canned soda. The ingredients I mix have warnings such as flammable, corrosive, do not inhale, and we basically wear hazmat suits while mixing this crap. Obviously, I no longer drink soda. So as an avid soda enthusiast, I must argue with this point. Many things that we come into contact with are dangerous. Drinking water is required to stay alive. Inhaling water will kill you. When you're cooking a cake, the flour is flammable. The oil is flammable, but we still eat the flour and eat the oil. So I get what you're saying. I get that soda's bad for you, and I probably honestly don't want to know what goes into it, but things are dangerous. Every okay, everything's dangerous, and I'm just I guess this is my new philosophy, as all the comments were like, who cares if it kills you, bro? Go b go enjoy that soda, man. Die for the soda, man. Maybe the YouTube comments are not the best people to take advice from. Caitlin said, as someone who is new to the channel, I am extremely confused <laughs> on the soda video. So every time I make a YouTube video, I try my best to start the video with enough context so that anyone jumping into any video can watch it and enjoy it and have the full context. But the problem is when you make a YouTube video, you need the first five seconds to be super engaging so people don't leave. So I usually within the first five seconds try to explain the entire series, but it's kind of impossible in some videos like this one. So yeah, it's um, shout out to all the newbie viewers who's actually managed to figure out what this channel's about. <laughs> Dakota said, you sipped that soda the way I would imagine a deer would. Okay, I guess. B Reeve said, is this what you do rather than manage your website and expansion? Yes. Tegan said, the versatility of this channel is unmatched. And you know, I, I like variety YouTube channels. Being a variety YouTube channel was pretty normal back in the day, back five, 10, 15 years ago on YouTube. But nowadays you really can't be versatile, which kind of sucks. Like if, if you have one video, which is unrelated and naturally won't do as well because it'll appeal to less viewers that are interested in the niche that you do. If you do something different, that video is gonna do like not good and then YouTube is like, uh-oh, Picadio, that video didn't do good. Now we're not gonna recommend your next video. And then it's like all oh, your next five videos don't do as well because you had, yeah. So basically I'm complaining on my soapbox about how I can't make stuff related to nothing but it's just how it is on YouTube now. It changes over time. She said, Dr. Pepper is my favorite drink. Dr. Pepper makes my throat bleed for days because I'm allergic to something in it. I would still drink it if my store had it. Well, I have nothing on Chi. That's pretty hardcore, stupid. I don't know which one. <laughs> and finally, Drake, Drake Bell said, be safe, cutie. Them, <laughs> I'm gonna read this. <laughs> okay, let's start over, everyone. Drake Bell said, Be safe, cutie. Th I can't read it. Them herpes are spreading on all my yummy locations. You are my sunshine. <laughs> and the YouTube auto, I didn't even notice the YouTube auto response is m mine too. Because YouTube now auto-generates responses that things might fit. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. I will. This is a great YouTube. Thank you so much. And with that, that's the end of reading your comments. Episode 5. Thanks for watching. And also thanks to those of you who clicked the thanks button under the video. Because that's a thing now, apparently. Uh, some of you discovered it because I turned it on. It's literally you click a thanks button and you choose how much money you give me. And your comment changes color. That's it. I get money, you get a colorful comment. But I appreciate those of you that have thanked, super, super thanks, just the comments. What I'm trying to say is if you want to give me money, you can click that button below and I would appreciate it. Um, but that'll be it for this comments video. If you want to see the previous ones, you can check out the playlist in the description below. But that'll be it. I'm Alex and thanks for watching.